Hello and welcome to this edition of the Ashbrook Central Spotlight. I am Gil Inglis and with us today in the studio, ladies and gentlemen, she is a dancer, an entrepreneur, someone that is definitely ensuring that the community and the ladies in the community not only are confident, but that they also feel good, that they are healthy. Miss Miyoka McBride, welcome to the Diaspora Central. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? I feel like we need to cue applause. Like, where's the applause button? There you go. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. And we're getting probably a lot of applause at home because they already they know you. They know what you do. Not yes. only not only for the entertainment industry, but also for the community, mm-hmm. which is also something great. Part of the one sound vibes connection. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to touch on a lot of those things. Diaspora Central, we tend to use this as a platform where we come in and we touch on the narrative that belongs to us mm. as a people. Yeah. We talk about our inspirations and we try to talk about our aspirations. Gotcha. If in the process of going through the journey, we touch on anything that you don't feel comfortable answering, don't. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. Mioka. Let's start with the name. Yes. Yeah. What does Mioka mean? Uh, you know, my mom, you'd have to ask her. Mm-hmm. She said that it was something she just came up with. Yeah. I've actually had someone uh, tell me that they looked it up. Mm-hmm. It has uh, Japanese origins, right. actually. And so uh, they mean it's someone said it means like the cherry blossom tree that stands mm-hmm. alone. But don't <laughs> quote go. me on that because I don't know for <laughs> sure. But but my mom wasn't thinking Japanese origins when she created the name. Yeah. Somehow she just put that name together. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you, mom. Yeah. It was kind of hard growing up with that name, but I think it's very <laughs> fitting now. So <laughs> if you want to look that up, y'all go ahead and look yeah. it up. Figure it out for me, please. <laughs> there you go. But but is is that it is definitely Japanese. Um, mm-hmm. I also did I also did look. Um, oh nice. Yeah, I also did look and. And, and a lot of times it's like when you when you kind of start to understand certain languages, even by the sound, you can kind of tell mm-hmm. what region of the of the globe they mm-hmm. may come from. And it's definitely that eastern side of uh, of the of the globe. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you mentioned mom. You didn't mention her name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My mother, her name is Linda. Yeah. Linda Lou. There you go. <laughs> Linda Lou. Now, where is home or where were you born? I was born and raised in the small ta- city. Mm-hmm. Small city. <laughs> small city of Bryan <laughs> College Station, Texas. Okay. So mm-hmm. a, a Texan. Yeah, I'm a Texan. Yeah, I Texan. am 100% a Texan. <laughs> yeah. And you said um, small city? It was a small city. Yeah. We did not ride horses. People always like, did you ride horses to school? Yeah. I'm like, no, we did not ride horses to school. We were, <laughs> we were a small city. Uh, you know, I, I rode a bus. My mom yeah. took me to school, but we were not riding buses. I mean, yeah. we were not riding horses. horses. No horses. <laughs> yeah. No, because, I mean, everyone says that everything in Texas is big. So yeah. that's why when you said small, I was like, okay. If it was it a is small Texas, city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, um, of course, currently... Although you do dance, you do Pilates, I, I, for some reason, I do think that you do plenty more than that. Uh, yeah, dance and Pilates, that, mm-hmm. those are my passions. Okay. And I, I'm just thankful that I've been able to uh, turn my passion into my life work. Mm-hmm. But um, that's all I knew really, you know, going growing up was dance um, and fitness. Okay. Um, so in my later years now, I've gotten into uh, business coaching. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I'm really good at it. I love telling people what to do. And I love telling them what things to do to be successful. And I know it works. Right. Um, And then also, um, that's that's my uh, my main thing that I do outside of what I already love, which is uh, Pilates Mm -hmm. and and dance is just uh, business coaching. There you go. So 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 professionally, then business coaching is your primary. Well, actually, Mm -hmm. um, so I am a part time Pilates instructor. Okay. Pilates instructor, um, and outside of that, it's just all entrepreneurial. Yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. And when I say part time, I'm working maybe four hours mm-hmm. every uh, uh, two times a week. Got gotcha. you. It's part time, part time. So I'm out here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely busy. Now your business is also. Let's kind of talk about that because as a business consultant, of course, those mm-hmm. things are sort of important. Mm-hmm. The names of your businesses they're very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Mioka, so Pilates was created by a man named Joseph Pilates. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
everyone who does Pilates, a lot of them who pursue their own business, they have their own name. Mm -hmm. And so I know that um, for my particular brand, I want it to be called Mioka Pilates. One, because no one, there are a few people in the world that have my name, a few. But I know that, that, you know, when you're creating a business name, it has to be something most likely that no one else will have. So I went with Mioka, unique, exactly. So I went with Mioka Pilates. Uh, I'm like, no one's going to have that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then for Heels Out, that was actually, that name was created by a friend of mine Mm -hmm. um, after my our first class before it was heels out mm. you know we were just talking and we're like are we gonna keep doing this am i gonna keep doing this thing yeah. and we were like yeah and she was like hashtag heels out Dang. and and i was like you know what i like it let's do it and i just took it and ran, ran and got it. it trademarked and all that mm. good stuff there you go mm. heels out but before we get into those things mm-hmm. we kind of want to touch a little bit on um you mm-hmm the shoulders of those on whose you stand on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you already mentioned mom, her mm-hmm. name. You come from a big family? Yes, I do. I'm number five of okay. six siblings. Okay. I'm number five. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's only one after you? <laughs> there's only one after me. And we were born in the same year. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's only, oh, wow. Yes. So you at the beginning and then they at the end of the year. Yes, exactly. Well, if to be in the, in the same year, I think you already, we kind of pretty much know it's it, got to it be the January or February at the most, right? It's got to be the January yeah, or February. Yeah, January, January, and then my sister, December. There you go. <laughs> 11 months apart. Exactly. <laughs> Way to go, Mom. Yeah. Hey, hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You gotta get them out of the way. <laughs> the, the, the closer they are together, the better. Because, yeah, I agree. Yeah, because you can kind of, at that point, she was. She knew she was closing that yeah. chapter, so she needed to kind yeah, of. I think after number six, she up. knew she was done. That was the last one. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, um, influences in the family that kind of mm-hmm. are either entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial mm-hmm. driven, or business. My mom. Wisdom. My mom was uh, my mom was an entrepreneur mm-hmm. uh, before it was trending. Yeah. Before all of the. Social media, mm-hmm. resources, YouTube video, YouTube university, as I call it, was out. My mom yep. was doing it, of course, when she was an entrepreneur, I was like in middle school. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know how powerful that was at the time. Like wow. all the things my mom was doing. She had a cleaning business, mm-hmm. um, and it was really good. She was just really good at cleaning. Yeah. Um, I'm really good at cleaning, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But and I say unfortunately because we ended up having to work with the business as yeah. well. But she was just doing things at the time mm-hmm. that now people can go and watch a video and learn. People can go do, you know, go mm-hmm. to YouTube University, right. have a mentor. My mom was just working off of intuition, mm-hmm. integrity, hard work, you mm-hmm. know, just figuring you connecting the dots, yeah. speaking to people at the church. They're kind of leading her in the right direction mm-hmm. to find a CPA. Mm-hmm. But I mean, she was really doing it. And now with my eyes, now I can look back and say, mm-hmm. man. I was mm-hmm. watching my mom do this. My mom was also a minister. Right. And she's she can be really shy. She's like okay. only like four foot nine. Oh, okay. But she's always been in front of people speaking. Yeah, petite. Really petite. And yeah. I just I never thought about it, but I've just watched her speak effortlessly in front mm-hmm. of people for so many years growing yeah. up. And now that's something that I really enjoy doing is public mm-hmm. speaking. Right. And and so I would have to say when it comes to influences you know, your children watch you more mm-hmm. than they hear you. Yeah. And just watching my mom do those things, I absolutely had a very big influence on my life. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you, you uh, what about dad? Oh, my dad? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I met my dad when I was, I wish I didn't have this story. <laughs> I met my dad when I was 13. He mm-hmm. was living in California. He finally moved back to my hometown. Okay. Um, right now, we do talk time to time. Mm-hmm. I, I can say he absolutely loves me to death yeah um for whatever reason he couldn't be there Mm -hmm. um but right now he 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 would probably speak to me more if he could yeah um but but you know he wasn't a big part of my life growing Mm -hmm. up but now we we do stay in touch there you go yeah there you go so as you coming up of course there are those influences um that um also come from either family Mm -hmm. um outside of the the, the close family, right outside mm-hmm. of, outside of the household, that extended family, I should say, from mm-hmm. friends, from school, mm-hmm. right? Where, where did you go to school? 
uh, in my hometown, mm -hmm. um, like high school, yeah. there was only one high school. It was at the yeah. time. There's more than one now. It was Bryan mm -hmm. High School. Bryan High School. Okay. Yes. And what about element, uh, middle and elementary school? I, what middle school? Oh, I went to Jane Long. Yeah. Middle school was horrible, by the way. Okay. I went to Jane Long, <laughs> and and I can't. I went to a few elementary schools okay. but yeah. but yeah in a small city like that you mm -hmm. pretty much go to school you know you all yeah. grow up together indeed and i would say in high school my biggest influence by far was my drill team director mm -hmm. um you know i spent three years with her okay. um i ended up being the first african-american dance captain mm. for 30 years history at the high school that i went to mm. um and i just really thankful to her you know there when you're you in go. drill team you spend way too much time at school and with right. your director right and i was able to build a relationship with her and yeah. she did have a big big impact Congra on, on my Congra life. congratulations on that first mm -hmm. right congratulations mm -hmm. on that first because it's that power of representation that mm -hmm. then drives things forward absolutely. right yeah absolutely so um so drill <laughs> Break that down for those of us that don't know what that is. Drill team. Oh, that's a Texas <laughs> thing for sure. Okay. Maybe a down south thing. Uh -huh. Drill team is uh, we put on some boots mm -hmm. and these skirts and mm -hmm. some some stockings, mm -hmm. and we perform during halftime uh, for the football games. We also perform go. at pep rallies. Yeah. We do some basketball games, but it's mostly entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, dance entertainment at yeah. games. Yeah, parades and and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we do parades. Yeah, I did. Parade. Yeah, I did have I did have an opportunity to see that. At, uh, in a parade actually mm -hmm. yeah and now uh, so you didn't mention the name of the teacher mm -hmm. uh, her name is uh, shannon reed yeah shannon reed yeah influential mm -hmm. yeah so as of course you evolve from there at some point um actually let's take our first break because i think we need to take a look at some of those heels out Okay. <laughs> While they're out. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that event actually that the, the this happens, I uh, believe, um, weekly, monthly. Give tell us a little bit about uh, Hills Out. Uh, Hills Out happens at least maybe once to four, one to four times a month, mm -hmm. and it's usually on a Friday or Saturday night. Okay. It's a party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a party that um, now can anyone just go to it? Do people need to register? They have to register. You got to okay. register. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for women, mm -hmm. for women by women. Yeah. Um, or if you uh, identify as a woman, right. it's just for women. It's mm -hmm. a class that. Uh, just empowers women to have fun, yeah. not be judged, mm -hmm. and just feel confident. Right. And that's uh, just to add some to it. it it's a group. Pri it's a private group environment, correctly. There, mm -hmm. there are no bystanders, watchers, or oh, anything. Oh, no. Yeah, right. we don't. I don't allow any bystanders, spectators, mm -hmm. female, male, anything like that. Right. If you're in there, you're dancing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. It <laughs> normally happens at the complex, which is, uh, is there an address? Oh, yes, 3898 mm -hmm. North, what is it, North Freeway? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet E, <laughs> Houston, Texas. <laughs> there you go. So that's Eels Out. Let's go into our first break right here with uh, Yashpura Central with Killing Less and Miyoka McBride. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Miyoka with Miyoka Pilates, and this is my Unleash class, which is a combination of kickboxing and Pilates. You will burn 700 plus calories in my class. A while back, I found out that women needed something more. A lot of times when we go work out, we're trying to get it all done at one time, but you want that feeling of being in a class where you have that accountability. So you have to choose, do I want to do strength workout today? Or do I want to do cardio because I got to go home and cook for my kids or I got a lot of work to do? So you come to Unleash, you can get cardio and you get Pilates strength training all in one hour. If that's what you need, then I'm ready to unleash you. And we are back. If you just joined us, you're now tuned into the Aspera Central Spotlight with Gil Inglés and our guest today. It's Mioka McBride. Yes, the heels out lady, the Pilates lady, <laughs> <laughs> the business consultant that in case you do need your business streamlined or better executed, she's probably the person that you need to talk to. Mm -hmm. Mioka. Yes, yes, Let's yes. talk a little bit about Pilates. Uh, not Pilates, but uh, heels out. Okay. Right. Um, the idea for that, where did it come from? How did it start? 
I was um, I was traveling with a group of ladies. Uh, we were in the Dominican Republic, and at that time, there was a video trending uh, by Aaliyah Janelle. She had created choreography okay. in heels to a dance that was a song that was also trending. Mm -hmm. So while we were on the trip, we were just having fun, and we were mimicking the dances. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this would be so much fun for my birthday. I think yeah. it was going to be my 34th birthday okay. to celebrate by having, like, a sexy dance class. There you go. And I was going to hire somebody to teach the class. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? After a while, I was like, you know what? I I have student loan debt from majoring in dance. <laughs> Guess who's going to teach this class? It's going to be me. And I had never taught a class like that before. Um, I had trained in modern ballet mostly in college, mm -hmm. and that's what I taught mostly. Yeah. So no one had ever seen me dance sexy. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. growing up with my mom in church, like it was, it almost seemed taboo. But mm -hmm. I was like, I want to, I want to give it a try. Yeah. And that's where the idea came from. I was going to just do a private party just for me and mm -hmm. a few friends. And then I was like, you know what? I was following. Uh, I'm not following anymore. Sorry, Dave Ramsey. I was yeah. following Dave Ramsey's mm -hmm. uh, plan. And okay. he was like, this is how much you need to have in an emergency fund. So I was like, yeah. wait, if I, you know, my my brain, yeah. I'm Capricorn and business. Mm -hmm. uh, my mind is always on business. <laughs> I was like, well, what if I celebrated my birthday and made money at the same there time? And then, and then yeah. that money could go towards my emergency fund that Dave Ramsey he said I need it and uh, and I did it yeah I had over 30 women some of them I knew some of them I didn't show up to my very first heels class mm. wasn't heels out yet my very first heels class and the feedback I got was so amazing mm -hmm. I I had only been working with um, high schoolers mostly mm -hmm. teaching dance okay. so this was my first experience outside of teaching Pilates mm. working with women got you and just seeing them smile and and just look happy mm -hmm. I was like oh I like this <laughs> So that's how it started. It was just something fun I was going to do for yeah. my birthday. And I wasn't even going to teach it. I was going to hire somebody to teach it. Yeah, there you go. See, you know that Aquarius is also think the same way. We're like, oh, oh, nice. About Are making you sure, Yeah, we make, <laughs> we're about making sure that that money is yes. going to capitalize as like much Aquarius as possible. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, indeed. So then you start the heels out. And, of course, today is a brand that is out there. People know about it. People do it. You of course have a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. um, the Pilate, uh, and, and um, you mentioned um, having a lot of um, student mm -hmm. aid mm -hmm. or student loans. Yes. Yeah. Meaning that you went to college. I did. Yeah. What school did you go to? Eat 'em up, cats! Uh, <laughs> shout out to Sam Houston State University, <laughs> BFA in dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how was how was how was that experience? College, my college experience, Gil, was very different mm -hmm. than a lot of people. Okay. Uh, I will say that by the time I graduated, mm -hmm. I had two kids and I was married. Okay. So I will never go back to college again. <laughs> um, and I will never put myself in more debt. I do not need any other degrees. I am good. I love business. I love entrepreneurship. But my experience was very, very different. I went to school right. my freshman year, mm -hmm. uh, had a baby, took a year off, came back, mm -hmm. was married, had another child. Mm -hmm. And and it was just, it was different. So I had I had a lot of fun that first uh <laughs> I like the way you framed that. I'd say. <laughs> I had a lot of fun that first semester, you know? It's all good. <laughs> it made me, you know what, Gil? It made Made me work really hard because right. when I went to college, I had I just had fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. I think I had lost I had lost like a hold of like what I was there for. Mm -hmm. And when I found out I was having a baby, I was like, oh, I got to pull it together. Yeah. Like I got to, I have a child to take care right. of. And, and mm -hmm. ever since then, once I found out I was having a baby, I was on the dean's list there until I go. graduated. Yeah. Grades, everything. I just snapped it right together. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I say my oldest probably <laughs> saved my GPA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, so you, you have two, two little ones. Yeah. Two big ones. My okay. oldest uh, just finished his first year in college, mm -hmm. and my youngest is a sophomore right now. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two college, two college babies. Yeah, yeah, doing doing big. Things. Oh, a sophomore in high school. Oh, sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one in college and one in high school. Yes. Okay, so they're a couple of years apart. You see, you gotta yeah. have them close. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I mean, might as well just go ahead and go for it. Why not? Yeah, get get them out, get it out the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, um, of course, maternity was was maternity the trigger for Pilates? Let me think. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I want to say when I when I went back to school. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember back when was it Netflix where you mm -hmm. had to order the Netflix through the mail? It came in a little red package. So yeah. after I had yes. my first son, 
I was ordering those little DVDs mm-hmm. yeah. and I was doing workouts at home. Right. And I really loved like the, the, the Pilates and fitness stuff that they mm-hmm. were doing. Uh, and then I would see shows and I was like, I want to do fitness competitions one day, you right. know, and I went back to school. It just so happened that one of our, um, professors, dance professors, his wife was getting certified to do Pilates. Mm -hmm. And she, of course, you have to work with someone. You have to get hours working on a body. And I agreed to do it. And I didn't know it was going to be super early in the morning, but Mm -hmm. I, I did it. And that work that we did, it was Minimum. It wasn't crazy like a lot of stuff you see people do with Pilates today. Uh, But it, my body, it just, I became super aware. Mm -hmm. It changed my movement style as a dancer. It changed, it changed how I teach as Mm -hmm. an instructor, as a dance teacher. Mm -hmm. And my ballet instructor, she didn't know I was doing Pilates, but she was like, I don't know what you've been doing, but keep doing it. And when she said that, I was sold. I was sold and I I just, I've (laughs) loved it ever since then. So looks like you normally tend to follow your passion. I do. Yeah. It's all, it's always the, I wish like is the primary engineering and force. like yeah. things of that matter could be my passion, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> a doctor or something, you know. <laughs> well, tr- trust you and me, teaching Pilates that takes a little bit of doctorship. It does. Yeah, you got to know making some up, I'm making up words around here. Yeah, you, <laughs> I like doctorship. Right, I'm a, yeah, I'm a doctorship, know, y'all. There you go. Yeah, you got to know what you're doing because you, do. you can you can pop. You really bend, can. You wrong, really can. do certain things, right? Because it's a very... You're dealing with people's bodies yeah, and injuries. Yeah, a very delicate, and, a very delicate mm-hmm. matter. Um, you can, you got to know what to do in order not to injure it, to actually yes. help the person um, become stronger. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, to bring about exactly. strength instead of weakness. Um, so... What is the name of the second one? The first one is Nick. What's your second show? Isaiah. Isaiah. Mm -hmm. So you have Nick and Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you go into school, get Mm -hmm. pregnant. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're married. Now you are a wife, Mm -hmm. a mother, and a student. Yes. Okay. This is a lot to pack on. It was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are certain things that we have to have in place to either help us guide ourselves Mm -hmm. or to guide us. What were those things for you during that time? I think that um, I was always super ambitious. Mm -hmm. The thought never crossed my mind to not finish school Mm -hmm. Um, because my mom, you know, growing up, she was a single parent. Mm -hmm. She worked so hard. So I didn't quite exactly understand what success looked like on the other, other side, Mm -hmm. you know, not having to live paycheck to paycheck and things of that matter. Like maybe some of my friends lived at the time, but, and actually the more you learn about money, the more you learn that a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, no matter how much Mm -hmm. they make. Mm -hmm. But I just knew that if I didn't, all I knew at the time is if I didn't finish school, that there wasn't going to be much opportunity at the time Because I didn't wasn't in my entrepreneur mind and business mind, I just knew that I needed to go to school. That's right. all I knew, and I just went. Right. I didn't. I took my SAT the day of my graduation. Mm. Who does that? Wow. I just I didn't know enough, and I was just like, well, I got to take my SAT because I got to go to college. Yeah. And then my brother went to Sam Houston for a while, and I was like, well, if he can get in, I know I can get in because I, you know, at that time I think I was in the top ten percent of my class, mm-hmm. um, and so I I knew I could get into Sam Houston. I didn't mm. know much about it. I didn't even do a college tour. Mm. I didn't even really see the college until the day I went to college. So you walked in for I just class went. without knowing you. Yeah, I just went. Yeah, you like. Okay, you're definitely passionate. You're yeah. like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm. I just got to go to college. That's all. Yeah. I just went to college. Gone. Literally, just <laughs> went. <laughs> so just being ambitious, I just knew that what was waiting for me if mm-hmm. I didn't do something different. Right. And I just knew I wanted something different. So I just that's all I had to cling to, really. Indeed. Yeah. And sometimes understanding that there's something different, better than what you think yeah. you can get at that point in time, waiting for you, and knowing that you can go get it yourself right. is very important. So let's go ahead and take our second break and this time let's take a look maybe at some Pilates um images to kind of figure this thing out hopefully <laughs> okay. Ho- yeah hopefully i don't pull a muscle while i'm watching <laughs> yeah, no, i'm gonna have to show you some, <laughs> some moves you can do at, at the house <laughs> there you go hopefully i can strengthen uh, a little bit and kind of because that also help, helps with positioning it and does. everything right yeah so we'll be right back right here on the Ashboro central spotlight with miyoki mm-hmm. mcbride yes the Pilates instructor the choreographer the business lady Right here. Mm-hmm. We'll be back.
are back if you just joined us you know tuned into the Ashpro Central Spotlight with Gil Inglés and Mioka McBride yes it is Mioka <laughs> <laughs> it's like sometimes we think we're Japanese here we start making up <laughs> I know right <laughs> <laughs> having unique names though kind of comes with that it does right? I'm so yeah, used to it comes, comes with that and um, we, we apologize for the mispronunciation at times but we really mean to say Mioka I know yeah we, we mean to say Mioka so Polaris, mm -hmm. what drives you eventually into really turning that into the business that you turned into? Oh, again, my kids. Whenever mm -hmm. uh, I decided to get certified, um, I knew that I was already a full-time teacher at the time, mm -hmm. teaching dance um, at Lamar High School. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I didn't have enough time to spread myself thin by mm -hmm. teaching dance, being a mom. At the time, I was dancing professionally mm -hmm. with a dance company here. Uh, shout mm -hmm. out to Urban Souls Dance Company. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew I, I didn't have time to work in a studio. I didn't want to be committed to someone else's schedule. Mm -hmm. And so when I got certified, I already knew out the gate that I was right. going to start my own business. And I did. I got that certification. I was like, thank you. Got that paper. Mm -hmm. And then I started Mioka Pilates. Right. At the time, I wasn't as business savvy as I am now. So mm -hmm. I just got a DBA from Mioka Pilates. Yeah. And if you know, you mm -hmm. know, don't just DBA, y'all. Yeah. Um, and so, and I just took that and ran with it. I created mm -hmm. my own exercise system. For those of you who remember Unleash, <laughs> I, uh, it was 30 minutes of uh, kickboxing, okay. cardio kickboxing, followed by 30 minutes of uh, high, low impact, but high intensity Pilates. Mm -hmm. And and we would burn over 700 calories in yeah. that one class. I mean, we were working. Mm -hmm. And so I just I just knew I needed to do something for myself on my own. And, yeah. and that's that's one of the things that I did. Hold on. You, you just threw something kind of like, pew, kind of mm -hmm. like, um, if you're not paying attention, it just kind of goes over your head. You mm -hmm. said you created mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. exercise system. I did. And it was hard, too. It was so much fun. <laughs> I need to bring Unleashed back. Like, yeah. I really need to bring that class back. You, you still got some videos of Unleashed? I do. Yeah. We I, got, did, we, I had a promo. We're gonna, we're I gonna had a look. promo video. I had yeah. a talk, a videographer come out. I mean, I just always had that mind to just yeah. go big or go no, home. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm and, and I'm, I'm watching you, and I, I'm, I am understanding mm -hmm. the way you function. You're very methodical, okay. <laughs> and very few people are like that, and that that normally mm -hmm. translates to success. Because mm -hmm. first of all, you mentioned DBA. For those people that don't know, DBA is doing business as mm -hmm. right. So if you're trying to start a business. You, you can actually just do business as that name, mm -hmm. although the business is still registered. It's not registered, but it's being operated by just you claim it. as mm -hmm. the owner, right? You're just claiming that name. Mm -hmm. And it's always good to register that DBA because mm -hmm. it, it gives you an opportunity to later on come back and use that name to mm -hmm. actually register the business with the state. Yeah. Yeah. Now... Mioka, you know that that kind of stuff, you don't just, you don't just like wake up and be like, okay, I'm going to do a DBA. Mm -hmm. You kind of hearing things, you, you mm -hmm. going into places, you, you getting some mm -hmm. tips or something from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where is that somewhere for you at that time? I'm trying to remember, how did I even find out about a DBA? I, I don't even remember. Are, how are I you a it. reader? You know, you I do. Lot? I do love to read. Yeah. I I did love to read just books for fun. Mm -hmm. Now I I've spent a lot of time listening to books via yeah. Audible for right. business. Yeah. Um. But so business has always been sort of like your passion. It was, I think, or something that you enjoy. It's something that I was never afraid of, there and I know. just embraced it, and I knew that I I just knew I liked things being done right, mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't until I used to do MLM. Okay. I was a part of an MLO company, mm -hmm. and that's when my whole mindset changed. If you've ever done MLM, you know it's like it's boot camp for mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. If you can do MLM, and I don't mean sign up and then join the witness protection program. <laughs> I mean sign up, get in that thing, build. Mm -hmm. You know, I ranked four times. Mm -hmm. I built a team. You know, MLM taught me how to be right. a, a hustler, a go-getter, and wow. a lot of the skills I learned in MLM yeah. uh, has a lot to do with my success in, in uh, my, my businesses yeah. now. So that's basically your boot camp. It was my boot camp. Yeah. Man, I, I don't think mm -hmm. I want to go back to MLM. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now, would it be fair to say that as you're growing up, uh, you're just thinking, okay, you want, you want, you you like dance, you love dance, of course, that's what you're gonna do. So you're probably gonna be a choreographer, a dancer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, artistically somehow, mm -hmm. maybe become something. Mm -hmm. What are you envisioning as you're growing up? I I always knew that I wanted to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have a desire to be a choreographer. Okay. I just, I love dancing. I love performing so much. Yeah. I was naturally, I'm always naturally shy. Mm -hmm. But when I'm performing or even when I'm public speaking, I'm yeah. not shy. Right. Um, but after I had my two kids, I mm -hmm. was a part of that dance company for a while. But I just, you know, having kids, you just have to change your direction right. in life. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't get to pursue being a dancer in the way that I thought I would. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, because of Urban Souls Dance Company, I was able to still pursue it mm -hmm. professionally yeah. and then I was able to build a really great uh, reputation mm -hmm. as a as a dance uh, as just a dance influencer in the city yeah. through my uh, position at Lamar High School and Bel Air High School mm -hmm. I joined the um, the fine arts for mm -hmm. dance I joined the team for the yeah. uh, for the district yeah. and I helped implement things for the district at the time mm -hmm. and and it just that happened so I didn't expect that to happen either but yeah. it definitely had to take a difference but if I had to say what was what did I think I was going to mm -hmm. do I thought I was just going to be you know dancing yeah. waiting tables and dancing that's what I thought <laughs> <laughs> waiting tables that's and what dancing. I thought <laughs> I don't think you ever thought you were going to be waiting tables because you you too you too driven you too driven I would have been the best <laughs> waiter ever and I would have been dancing and I would have been happy probably living in an apartment with four other people somewhere in New York <laughs> yeah you're definitely thinking that New York lifestyle Right. Yeah. 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 We're um the four by four room. Exactly. Where every all your belongings stacked up from the floor <laughs> to the ceiling. And waiting and, tables. Right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's definitely not where you are. And uh, and of course, your ambition is actually driven you a lot into a lot of other things. Um, your uh, financial literacy also mm -hmm. is something to actually be impressed by because mm -hmm. you you of course mentioned David Ramsey as mm -hmm. one of the one 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 of the names of uh, someone. Who, who you had at some point followed mm -hmm. and um, and you mentioned uh, an emergency fund so mm -hmm. let's touch a little bit on the, on financial literacy mm -hmm. of course going to school mm -hmm. being a, a wife mm -hmm. a mother <laughs> and graduating <laughs> <laughs> takes a lot of financial mm -hmm. know-how yeah yeah of course, you you did say that you accumulated some uh, yeah. student yeah. debt, mm -hmm. but even to go figure out where to get the student loans from mm -hmm. already takes something. Man, that's right? so easy and to qualifying do. Qualifying <laughs> for those. <laughs> oh, it's so easy to get yeah. those student loans. They have computers set up, right. and you go in there and you click on how much money you want. You yeah. sign some stuff you don't even understand because you're yeah. too young right. to understand, and and then next thing you know, you got all this debt when you graduate. <laughs> So I would say my financial literacy mm -hmm. was only that of what I learned from home, which is most people's mm -hmm. financial literacy. Yeah. And and when do you even learn about what the word, the phrase financial literacy? Right. I didn't know anything about financial literacy. Yeah. All I'd known was what I had seen. Mm -hmm. And that was a single parent home, you know, doing her best, mm -hmm. which she always did, living yeah. check to check, mm -hmm. you know, making ends meet the best that she could. Mm -hmm. That was my idea, you know, and those were the things ingrained in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, so having to now appreciate financial literacy, yeah. it feels like, I don't know if you've ever heard the saying of like, it feels like some people have been around the Monopoly board Right. 20 times yeah and i'm still in the those first three the blue yeah. <laughs> i'm still in blue you know i got my little 200 dollars and i got right. him in the blue yeah. and you know when you people don't they always like to say oh it doesn't matter we can't go back there but when you look back there were times where mm -hmm. years and years where we weren't even allowed to learn how to read right. so when people say that there are people who've been around a monopoly board mm -hmm. many times before yeah us, it is a hundred percent true, yeah. and I feel that every day, as if yeah. I'm trying to catch up and learn about money, mm -hmm. um, because it, it wasn't my birthright. It wasn't yeah. something that I grew up with, or something mm -hmm. that I grew up learning. Right. I have friends that I know that their parents took care of things for them, or mm -hmm. was able to do that, so they kind of right. got an easy foot on life. Right. But um, that's not my story. Mm -hmm. So. Becoming financially literate has been a upward hill mm -hmm. challenge. Yeah. 
it is it, very much so upward hill. Yeah, and and a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think that once you do become, things just automatically get better. No, they don't know that it's a continuous not. effort in which you gotta do at all times. Yeah. Now you mentioned an emergency fund, mm -hmm. um, and for those of you that don't know, normally it is recommended that your emergency fund will be at least ten percent of what you earn, mm -hmm. right? So, or at least three months of your living expenses, mm -hmm. right? So today, of course, as a business consultant, as, mm -hmm. a, as a Pilates instructor, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you probably have also now become the, 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 the psychological mm -hmm. um, or, the, or the, the, the psychologist for many mm -hmm. with whom you work, just because I know that yes. when you're working with people, in this kind of environment, it becomes part of the conversation it because th those are intimate spaces that require mm -hmm. trust and know-how. And once people yeah. trust, people share. Yeah, exactly. What tips can you share with our audience that you believe that could help them overcome, mm -hmm. one, debt, unnecessary debt, yes. right? Because there's good debt also, but let's mm -hmm. talk about unnecessary debt. Right. Two, the ability, give them the strength or the ability to come out of that place where they think that there is no way out. Yeah, I, you know, I've become very passionate about financial literacy. I'm mm -hmm. not great at it yet, mm -hmm. but um, I don't necessarily follow Dave Ramsey's plan because mm -hmm. I've now learned since I, that was, <laughs> I was 34 when I started mm -hmm. my company doing okay. the Dave Ramsey thing. And I'm, yeah. and I'm about to be 40 in January. Mm -hmm. And so now I've learned that money sitting inflation, you just shouldn't mm -hmm. let money sit. So I would not right. necessarily do that. I would put my money somewhere where it can invest, but I would still have access to it in the mm -hmm. event that I needed it for something. Yeah. I don't think about saving up for an emergency. I think about investing mm -hmm. and saving up for something that I enjoy. Right. Um, because if you're investing, you'll have money for in the event of an emergency. Mm -hmm. But I would say the biggest thing I've learned, Gil, is that um, – Financial literacy starts in your mind. Mm -hmm. You have to, and when I say this, it's if you want to have a free life financially, mm -hmm. it starts in your mind right. because you literally have to rewire your thoughts. You have mm -hmm. to rewire what you grew up with. And when you're th talking about grew up, mm -hmm. depending on how long you lived in your household, right. that's how many years of rewiring you have to do. <laughs> so right. rewiring could be things like, do you have McDonald's money? Yeah. So you're basically telling me that, and we all say it. I've, mm -hmm. I've said it, I promise. Mm -hmm. uh, we That's telling us, well, if you don't have the money, yeah. I don't have the money. We're not going there, so don't right. ask. Right. You know, or just, you know, you see your parents living paycheck to paycheck, so mm -hmm. you think that's the way to do it. Just spend it while I have it, yeah. and then go to work and then start all over again. Yeah. So the biggest thing that I will tell people is you have to rewire your brain, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You have to really go back. Mm -hmm. And think about what trauma is associated with money and your spending habits. Because if you don't, it's not going to change. I was just telling my son, I'm watching this show on Netflix called How to Get Rich. Mm -hmm. It's a really great show. I encourage that show is the best. And I encourage everyone to take a look at that mm -hmm. if you really want to change your life financially. Yeah. But I told my son, someone can make $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And someone can make $100,000 a year, mm -hmm. and both of them are living paycheck to paycheck. Indeed. Now, the $100,000 person might be driving a different, a better car and living right. a better home right. than the $20,000, but they're both broke at the end of Friday. Facts. Because everybody lives up at the top of their means. Facts. So we have to change our mindset with money. We have to go back and think about the trauma mm -hmm. associated with money and how we think about money. Yeah. And we can't live in this place of... I, I deserve to give myself this. Mm -hmm. I deserve to buy myself this thing and that thing. Because at the end of the day, you don't. Right. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, you don't deserve to right. get your lashes done. You don't deserve to right. go get $100 nail jobs right. every week. You know, mm -hmm. you deserve to go polish your nails yourself. Right. Yeah, learn how to do them. Yeah, right. I've had to glue in <laughs> tracks before. You right. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you have to, you have to rewire your brain. That mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Once you rewire your brain, then you can start. There is a really good book that I love that I've been working with. It's called the 30 Day Money Cleanse. Mm -hmm. So if you can give yourself 30 days to like rework your money, really look at how much am I actually making, mm -hmm. how much am I spending, do mm -hmm. I have more month than money? <laughs> you know, then that's a good way. So that that's that's what I would say. Yeah. No, I, I definitely appreciate you sharing that because mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit of what I did a few mm -hmm. years ago. I actually sat back and I did that cleansing, but I, I kind of went gung-ho. Mm -hmm. Just I picked up one day and I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I need to kind of just position myself here. Let me 
first start there. Mm -hmm. In 2013, I decided that I was going to eliminate any debt that mm -hmm. was unnecessary for me. Nice. So I made that decision in March. Mm -hmm. That's when I met uh, Susan uh, Orman. Mm -hmm. I told her I was going to do that, and I did that by December. Wow. I had eliminated That's all amazing. That. Right. I really had cut out anything that was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, mm -hmm. I didn't even have a credit card. Wow. Until I picked up my first credit card, I believe, at the beginning of this year. What? You're yeah. like, okay, it's time. Yeah. Right. And and at that point, I was really like, I would, I mean, I was good. I was mm -hmm. really good. And, and I became good, and, and it took that level of discipline. So when I got yeah. to Houston, I took that opportunity also mm -hmm. to not even transport plant belongings from one place to another. No, what I did was I got this and I said, okay, unless I need it, I'm not bringing it in. Right. Yeah, but of course. Um, it I mean, takes that laser focus, though, like yeah, to you, really, indeed. really get out of the situation. Right. Yeah. But I, I have one vice. Mm -hmm. um, equipment electronics, because of music and film, sometimes <laughs> get me in trouble. We all have a vice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Those get me in trouble. That, that's my that's If my you can make witness. money from your vice, <laughs> then vice away. <laughs> and, and that's what I, I then mm -hmm. started to apply. It was more like, okay, and that's the stage where I'm in now. Mm -hmm. Unless it's really generating, yeah. I'm not bringing it in. Yeah. Right. So... I just kind of wanted to share that in there, but mm -hmm. I, I like I like I like your tips really. Laser focus, laser focus, yeah, def man, that's what it really takes. Definitely, always it's like you got a karate, like karate <laughs> shop, like nope, 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 not until I'm out of debt, nope, Indeed. nope. And you know, my thing is, I used to think I I had a very hard time seeing myself five years and ten years down the road. Mm. I when I was in my twenties and early thirties, I'm like, I want it now, I want yeah. it now. And yeah. because I had that energy of wanting it now, 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 mm -hmm. I could never think like if I do this right now, by right. the time I'm thirty nine, yeah. I can go to yeah. you know, yeah. go travel more. Yeah. I can have this yeah. and I can have that. But I just I couldn't I just couldn't think that way. It's not part of our culture also. No, it's not. And we sometimes fail to realize that mm -hmm. because um uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately, culturally, we already come from a culture of survival, regardless yes. of what part of what continent we from. Yeah. Right. We come from a culture of survival. That's part of that right. trauma that you talk about. It is it, all of our trauma is exactly the same. Doesn't matter where you're from. Right. Is is a trauma. Is is a is a mindset of survival of right. just being able to barely make it and and live the, with the PTSD. Um, it is th that you know that at any point in time, this can just be taken and gone, like yeah. completely gone. So. Planning, to hold on to like, what we can. Right. Yeah. So planning for bigger things, it really became becomes almost like a distraction when you're surviving. Right. right? It is. So it really change takes that changing your mindset and knowing that you want to go next. Let's take another break and take a look at something different. Anything that has to do with Mioka McBride, and we'll be right back right here on Diaspora Central with Gail Inglis. Heels Out is a sexy dance experience for women. The choreography is curated for women with little to no dance experience. The purpose of Heels Out is just to give women a space to feel sexy. Um, and that's without the attention of other men, without the attention or without worrying about kids. It's just um, when you walk in, it should feel like your space. It should feel like, okay, I can be comfortable here. And what I normally say is that sexiness can translate into building confidence. Because if you feel sexy, it, it doesn't have to do with um, sex per se or trying to be sexy for someone. It's just for yourself and uh, being able to, like I said, translate that into just confidence. How can you take that confidence into the workplace? How can you take that confidence into an interview? How can you take that confidence uh, with your family or your loved ones or your husband or, or your kids? Um, it can go super far. I always joke and say, I'm going to teach you how to be sexy here, but what you do with it when you leave is totally up to you. And we are back. If you just joined us, you're now tuned into Diaspora Central with Gil Inglis. And our guest today is Miyoka McBride. Yes. Not the Japanese Miyoka, no, the <laughs> hills out, <laughs> the Miyoka Polaris, the Miyoka that has her own exercise program, Miyoka. Yeah. What's the name of your exercise unleash, program? Unleash, unleash <laughs> your best body, unleash. Unleash your best body. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Being driven, mm -hmm. being focused, mm -hmm. being about your business takes a lot of heart. It does. Yeah. Of course, in your case, your mom was your biggest influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure that today your mom probably looks at you mm -hmm. as one of her biggest influences also. I think so. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there's always that time in which you become the master because mm -hmm. our parents also at, at a certain point start to learn newer things with they us do. because she was doing it just as she was coming along. Right. All of a sudden you started doing it mm -hmm. as she was doing it because that's what you learned. But mm -hmm. then you started to identify specific scientific steps or methodologies behind it that actually right. made it better. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Kids today, Many of them believe that going to school is not necessary. Mm -hmm. Going to college is not necessary. Um, right. When you know and understand methodology, we all know that, okay, it may be true for some, but mm -hmm. not for all. Right. But there are things that one cannot teach an individual, mm -hmm. and that's being driven. You can't teach that. Yeah, you can't teach that. You either have it or, or you, you don't. don't. Or you better get right. it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. to get it, sometimes you have to be paired with someone that has it so that you mimic those steps and eventually becomes muscle memory mm -hmm. and you too start thinking that way. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So, and I'm going there because I kind of want to talk about the circle, mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. that one needs to surround themselves with. Therefore, one sound vibes mm -hmm. is that sort of an environment. Mm -hmm. It is. Right. You have been part of that. Um, initiative from its inception. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit from your perspective on what the benefits of creating or being around the tribe, mm -hmm. what some of those benefits are. It's been, it's been amazing. Um, so One Sound Bob Connections is the brainchild of my fiance, Lafayette Taylor. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a multi multicultural complex for creatives and business professionals, entrepreneurs, and since its inception, which has been over a year now, we started mm -hmm. in January, we've been able to pull people together um, and, and, and maybe they wouldn't have ever come together right. um, and they get a chance to work with each other and people get to build and grow their their ideas mm -hmm. at One Sound Vibe Connections, things that they thought they'd never be able to do just because they're connected with people that they trust and mm -hmm. people that genuinely tr uh, support them. Right. Uh, one of the biggest things that I love is the idea that Lafayette has is our platform. Mm -hmm. Our exclusive platform gives people an opportunity to be a part of this platform. And I say exclusive mm -hmm. because it is a membership-based paid platform, and it is way more worth what we're charging. Mm -hmm. But you get access to other individuals, creatives, business professionals, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, and you agree to work with, by choice, anyone in that platform that is a member of that exclusive uh, organization, mm -hmm. and you provide your services free or little to no charge right. in exchange for services and and you do that with the people in that organization so for me I was all on it because mm -hmm. when we first started I was able to provide my business coaching services mm -hmm. and a lot of people never get access to a business coach right. I am a lot of people right did not have access to a business coach. So for me, it just felt good to pour into people and, mm -hmm. and be like, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Don't do this. I did this. I messed up. Don't do that. Steer away. This is how you get your virtual address. This is how you start your LLC. This is how you want a brand, attraction right. marketing. And I just was able to feed into people. And then I had people feed into me. I right. was able to have videographers come and in, in, uh, capture promo videos mm -hmm. for me, photo shoots for my company, which yeah. helped to expand the branding. Right. And it, it became a really beautiful collaboration where people really felt supported. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing that I love about it, is that people yeah. just get to come together because as you know, as a business owner, we don't always have the upfront money to do everything. Right. And then forget what dreams we have of things we would like <laughs> to do. <laughs> you know, let's talk about what we need, but the things right. we like to do. Yeah. And so we get, we got a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's super important for community with that, just being able to have access. Right. Right. And, uh, and, 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 and you mentioned something, for, forget about what you want to do, because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you start a business, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you find yourself in that spot in which the little bit that you have, right. you have to commit to the right. business alone. <laughs> exactly. Because there's really, there's no more spending around and mm -hmm. the getting those, you know, the, the bling uh, kind of goes away and it becomes about the necessities, right? The bare necessities or the survival right. necessities for the business. And of course, in a collective such mm -hmm. as that one, you have the ability mm -hmm. to, to do 
some things aside from just the bare necessities. Yes. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, um, anything new going on with um, either Heels Out or Mioka Pilates? Uh, well, I am uh, working on my digital pro- uh, platform for Mioka Pilates. Okay. I have opened myself up to start doing private sessions on the Reformer one on one. I do my big, my heart goes out to making Pilates Reformer more accessible to our community, mm-hmm. uh, black and brown people. So yeah. that's something that I've always had a big heart for. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of us don't have access to it because it is crazily expensive. It was right. expensive to get the certification. Yeah. And so I, I get it, and the body of work is that way. Um, working on building my digital platform so mm-hmm. that people can work out with me from yeah. wherever they are. There you go. Um, heels out. Um, one of the things I haven't told many people, but my goal this year is to franchise my company. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just thankful for the people that I have again in this circle at one sound vibe that right. just kind of pushing me and putting those thoughts in my head. Right. And so that's the goal. There's the franchise adding more opportunities with heels out with our heels out intimate class that's going to be launching right. it's heels out without the party there so women get a chance to build flexibility light conditioning mm-hmm. still learn choreography and we create a safe place for them to speak and just have a voice go. in that in that time yeah. um, so i'm really excited about everything that's that's coming up and then again i'm just excited to see where the where life takes me in, in terms of financial literacy mm-hmm. one of the things i'm manifesting for myself is public speaking okay. i absolutely love speaking i just had an opportunity to speak at a um my first paid speaking gig was at my alumni at hey. sam Houston state university congratulations yes I, that yeah. was a bucket list I, I didn't really think it would happen but they had yeah. me come back and speak that, that, that's um, a child coming back home it was it was, it was very <laughs> special i was like me um yes. and then i just recently had an opportunity to speak at a um it was um, an organization sorority okay. and just being able to pour into them and speak about emotional intelligence and, mm-hmm. and how that really ties into working with people yeah. so so that's probably the the next thing is um, really thinking about tightening up my financial literacy, there public speaking, building my Pilates pr- platform, franchising mm-hmm. my company, okay. um, and we'll see what else comes up. There you go, because great things always do come they for do. those who look for them. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how can people get in touch with you? You can you get in touch with me on Instagram at, with my name, Mioka McBride. Mm-hmm. Um, also with Heels Out. Uh, we're on Instagram at Heels Out Dance Party. Okay. Um, our website, Heels Out Movement. And look, I, I know you're not supposed to have that many different variations with your company. <laughs> and that's another story for another day. Uh, HeelsOutMovement.com. Um, and if you just type in my name, M-E-O-K-A, you will find me because it's there not that many of us in the world. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Look, it ain't right. It, that's a whole other story. Yeah, but, no, but but you know, see here at Dashboard Central, you can just say something like that and kind of like let it slide. Just let it slide. Uh, no, no, let no. We we go back. We get it back. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess first, why so many names? And uh, are you now working on? So the the company is trademarked one. as hashtag heels out. Okay. Um. So we we had an Instagram, and that's why I say we don't own social media. Yeah. So we listen to me, y'all. Do not put all your eggs in a basket when it comes to social media. Mm-hmm. We don't own it; it's not ours. And so, yeah. um, when it comes to the our social media page, Instagram, we mm-hmm. had it as heels out, but we we don't have access to that page anymore. I've tried everything, but yeah. fly to the moon to get that page back, mm-hmm. and we just couldn't. So we had to start a new page, which is heels out dance party oh wow um for my website full transparency yeah uh when you have a, a website domain you got to pay for that domain right. and if you miss the payment there it. it is a business of people to buy domains mm-hmm. And then sell them back to you to make money, yeah. which I learned the hard way. Um, and so I did have Heels Out when I first started, mm-hmm. lost that domain. Someone bought it and to have it back, it costs something that I will not pay. Mm. If you're out there, I'm not right. paying you for that. Yeah. Um, and for something that you created. Yeah. But they, but you, if you don't know, you can have a business of buying domains and people would have to pay you. Mm-hmm. Um, so just throwing that out there. But, um, and so I, now I have to use heels out movements.com. So for you, all of you who are doing business, make sure that your stuff is all your eggs are in a row mm-hmm. and you're using the same name on every platform. No variations. There you go. Don't do what I did. Yeah. Streamline it. Streamline Stream, there it. You go. Streamline <laughs> it. Streamline it. And that's the reason why it is important to get yourself either a business consultant yes. or someone that understands business very well to assist you. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't put them on your payroll, get right. that 
advice yes because it is necessary and as you know diaspora central we always here to bring you whoever may have that knowledge to share that with you mioka mm-hmm. thank you for coming in of course it's been sharing a pleasure. this sharing your journey and uh, <laughs> all this business and then all these kind of tips and now i just have one more question mm-hmm. did you pledge I did not. Okay, uh, I pledge. was too busy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> having having children and getting married. You're I did right. not. And I was in the process of, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say which one, okay. because I believe one day I will be an honorary member yeah. of that organization. There you go. Bye, and bye sometimes you. because I work with so many women, Gil, mm-hmm. I thought maybe I don't want to be. I just want to yeah. be, I don't want to be associated with anybody. I just yeah. want to be a woman Indeed. who supports all women all, all other causes mm-hmm. yeah indeed and then and, and then today even even for those who pledge also that that is kind of like the mindset right mm-hmm. that that just creates sort of like that that uh, how can i say the bottom line right. uh sisterhood yes. but of course you have more than a sisterhood you're part of the one sound vibes complex yes. that's a lot more than, yes. than than just a sisterhood you have a brotherhood there you have all the support necessary mm-hmm. you know best wishes with all your initiatives and thank you okay. for stopping by and sharing this information with us for those of you that want to get in touch with her you heard what the website is which is healsoutmovement.com <laughs> healsoutmovement.com and in case you forgot or you need to find a place where you can probably find all of those hashtags and handles that mioka goes by of course you can always visit us at diasporacentral.net we'll definitely have something there mioka thank you thank you all right for those of you that joined us thank you for being with us until next time remember if you don't do it for yourselves nobody else will till next time peace